Welcome to Milk and Honey on this chilly morning. Fall has finally come to Florida. It is 56 degrees and over here in North Florida, we're going to drop to 42 on Saturday. Now those temperatures are night temperatures or I would say like around five, six in the morning. And then morning temperatures will return to the 70s. I actually just received an email saying that my onions were going to be delivered today and so I'm going to put my onions all around my um, pool. I have some bats right there and we had a really strong wind and it broke some of my roselles branches. Roselles break very easily in high wind um, but yeah that is what I am doing. I have also been transplanting my little seedling starts. The seeds that I randomly threw on the ground about a month ago, um, they are ready to be transplanted. So that is what I have been doing also. Also, my chickens are big enough for me to give them more room. I, oh, I think that one's cold. <laughs> um, my chickens are big enough that I could give them more room. So, um, because my cats would attack them not to kill them but just to play when they're super little so i wait for them to get to a certain size before i let them um, be loose and be able to defend themselves so i'm just going to cage this area again um, so they could have free access and more room to play around but look at how good i mean i know there's still some spots like right here where i see little weeds coming up but my chickens did a phenomenal job of de-weeding this and then I just came with the mulch and mulched it. I will continue to run my chickens through this section right here even though I still have mulch. I put mulch already. Um, their feces, all of their um, scratching, it will help the mulch to break down quicker and become soil quicker. I'm excited for my soil to actually build up Overall, it's a beautiful day, full of projects, but yet beautiful, and I'm so blessed to be able to garden. Here are some of my rapini. Look at how big they are. Um, I believe they're like six weeks that I planted them. But look, I've only fertilized the ground two times with liquid fertilizer on my hose. Um, but right now, I am going to come and put a granule fertilizer granules um, are slow release so throughout the season it'll feed my plants and the liquid fertilizer is like a little boost um, it's organic liquid fertilizer and I've been scratching a little bit my soil but it tends to get my soil like clumpy like you see right here and then it doesn't want to absorb the the water so I just been scratching and doing very deep, deep watering. Here is a spot that I haven't um, moved my little transplants, but all of this area, they are transplanted and on that side as well. But yeah, we still have to move these. So I've been sprinkling seeds like a little fairy in the garden. I think this is bok choy. Like I'll just grab whatever seeds and I'll put them in the ground randomly. <laughs> I think this is my very first time growing bok choy, but I really believe this is bok choy that I put here. Um, but yeah, look at that. Don't ever think that you're too late um, to plant anything in the ground, um, especially greens in fall and winter. Um, a lot of people will say, no, it's too late, it's too late. Well. You see all of these, these were from transplants that I put in the ground maybe in um, like in mid-October. They definitely have like six weeks in the ground, um, but I would not have anything if I didn't start it. So just start, you don't lose anything. Now I have an abundance of transplants just because I threw some seeds in the ground and hope for the best the only thing with starting late transplants is that you do want to feed them feed them fertilize them do like to use a lot of fish fertilizer and any liquid fertilizer um, and then 
throw the granule afterwards but the liquid fertilizer will give them the little boost so it could um, grow faster especially if we're starting seeds late I don't have a favorite um, fertilizer basically whatever I could find on sale because I am not gonna buy fertilizer on your regular price point whatever I find on sale um, I, that's what I buy and that's what I fertilize my beds with I try not to overspend on fertilizers I only buy when they're on sale so quick tip okay I want to clarify about starting seed late the seeds that I started late um, are very fast to maturity um, like greens radishes my rapini and we don't get very hard freezes over here we get frosts and everything that I'm growing by the time we have our frost they're gonna be pretty much um, pretty much mature to a point where if we do get frost if we do get um, a light freeze nothing's gonna it, they're not gonna cause any damage to my plants but I obviously do not want to start peppers or tomatoes right now because we it's just they're not gonna do it well um, also with my long to maturity like cabbages they're gonna take 90 days especially in fall and winter where daylight short where daylights are shorter um, they might not mature in time before we get our heat back in and so I will just have to either harvest young harvest a smaller um, piece of cabbage or it might even bolt so you are playing Russian roulette it just really depends on the weather and how it goes but if you trying to grow like fast to maturity before that hard freeze comes just make sure you check on that you know yesterday i was watching a youtube show called justin rhodes um it's about homesteading i know a lot of people know him he has like two million a million subscribers um but there there's a lady called Anne, the the smiley one and they were processing her sheep and she was crying while that she was pro she was going to process her sheep um basically you know kill it and i was right there with her crying because a lot of people think that just because um we process our own meat our own chickens that we like that we're cold-hearted um, every time I process my chickens, I, uh, it's not easy. I get upset, um, but I just don't trust what the grocery stores are providing for us now, um, right now. They're full with antibiotics and preservatives and they fill them up with um, saline before they sell it to us. And I just don't trust it. And especially for my, my children, my autistic son, I want to feed him the least amount of processed things i'm not perfect sometimes do you know give in to our cravings and um, eat what we're not supposed to but that that's not the everyday norm um the only person that i have blocked from my channel um was one this one lady who kept insisting of how evil i was for eating chickens and processing my own chickens and i gave her you know plenty of time to stop being um, combative and argumentative in my in my comments and she didn't stop so I blocked her but that's the only person that I have blocked um, people have called me ugly people have told me to go back to my country I never have blocked anybody because I truly don't care um, but if you but if you're going to argue with me of how I'm trying to raise my family um, that's where I I don't I don't don't cross that line um, this is the best that I can provide right now with our circumstances is the best that we can provide for right now um, and I'm gonna do it it's, it's not easy it's not easy growing your own food I mean I love animals you guys see how many cats and and um, dogs we have um, I get really attached to them and the moment that I buy my meat birds that is the moment that I start mourning for them I start preparing myself like okay I'm gonna give you the best that I can and I'm going when I dispatch them I want to do it the fastest uh, way that I could possibly can the the most gentle way that I could possibly can um, because I have noticed that when the, the calling process doesn't go smoothly 
the end product, um, it's much tougher. If I am able to catch the bird pretty easily, put it in the killing cone and kill it like an under a minute, um, their meat is much softer, more tender, um, just because those chemicals that, that their body releases, um, that uh, uh, adrenaline um, doesn't toughen up their meat. Um, and that is why resting the meat is so important. You have to rest it 30 to 40 hours in chill um, conditions with ice so that the body has enough time to release those chemicals out of their, their body, out of their meat. But that is why buying food from the grocery store, it is not the best because they transport your meat to another facility. So that means that your animal who is used to a certain um, schedule, now it's being moved from their normal day so they get anxious they get antsy um so all of those chemicals are running through their body and then the way that they get this patch is completely another story so that is why i am opting at least our chickens um growing our own chickens a very quick example is when when you're nervous and you perspirate, you you sweat. Um, it's a different scent that when you're just sweating because either you're working in the garden or because it's hot outside. Um, it smells different, it smells stronger. I am talking um, because I have two sons and my, my autistic son, he is more of a stinky boy um, than my other son, but my other son doesn't get so easily flustered and my autistic son, obviously, he has his sensory issues and he gets stressed more. So I believe that's one factor. So yeah, there is a quick and easy way to describe it. Um, that's the same thing that happens to animals, um, but they, they captivate it in their body. So I hope it makes sense. Okay, that's a quick and easy video for today. I actually have to go to the store um, and buy a couple of things. I might record it, I might not. But yeah, well, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next time.